Hello, Lord Fellows. It's so nice to see you again, and thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. I'm very, very uh, honored uh, to be uh, given the Antiquarian Award. I, I'm rather overcome, actually. So uh, anyway, it's nice to be here with you all. Well, thank you. So uh, without further ado, as chairman of the Preservation Society of Newport County, it is my privilege to recognize Julian Fellows with the Antiquarian Award. The rich imagination of Julian Fellows has ignited a worldwide and unprecedented interest in periods of history which people knew little of or cared much about. The Antiquarian Award, the Preservation Society's highest tribute, honors Lord Fellows' unique abilities as a historian, researcher, writer, storyteller, director, producer, and novelist. He has instilled in viewers and readers a love of history with his creation of Downton Abbey and the Gilded Age. His screenplays for Gosford Park, for which he received an Oscar, The Young Victoria, the Emmy Award-winning Little Lord Fauntleroy, the BAFTA-nominated The Prince and the Pauper, and with his novels Belgravia, Snobs, and Past and Perfect, Lord Fellows has entertained millions of people around the world with memorable stories and characters dealing with every level of society and all aspects of humanity. The worldwide hit series, Downton Abbey, was created, written, and executive produced by Lord Fellows. He was the sole writer for the series, the highest rated drama in PBS history, which received 69 Emmy nominations and won 15. Downton Abbey remains the most nominated non-US show in history of the Emmy Awards. It has generated two feature films, Downton Abbey and Downton Abbey, A New Era which premiered recently to rave reviews. With his adored or reviled characters leading the way, viewers enter two parallel worlds, the life of the aristocracy and the lives of those in service. Lord Fellow's HBO series, The Gilded Age, an epic tale, chronicles the calculating and often scandalous social history of the time, pitting the established society against the new. Lord Fellow's deserves huge credit for highlighting the character Peggy Scott, an aspiring writer and single mother from an upper middle class African-American family in Brooklyn. His love and passion for Newport shines through the Gilded Age. The Preservation Society, the owner and steward of 11 historic house museums in which the Gilded Age history is meticulously preserved, reaffirms that Julian Fellows' fictional tales are based on authentic history in which Newport plays a starring role. Both the Preservation Society and the city of Newport have benefited from his careful filming, which provided a massive economic stimulus. The Gilded Age captures and showcases the beauty of Newport and our mansions in ways no one could imagine and brings to life an era of history that is underappreciated and often misunderstood. Lord Fellows, for your tremendous contributions to convey history on a grand scale and your commitment to inclusion and historical accuracy, it is with the deepest gratitude that the Board of Trustees of the Preservation Society of Newport County present you with the Antiquarian Award, our highest honor. Lord Fellows, would you like to say a few words? No, I certainly would. Uh, I am tremendously honored, even overwhelmed, to be given the Antiquarian Award. Uh, this has been an extraordinary period in my career, actually, the discovery uh, and sort of exploration of the Gilded Age. Uh, and one of the major parts of that for me has been my own discovery of Newport. Of course, I knew about Newport, I've read about Newport, but I haven't been there, I haven't experienced it until we started uh, to make the program. Uh, and I find it an extraordinary place. Uh, I, I've already called it the village of palaces, uh, but uh, that is what it is. It's rather like Potsdam or Versailles or any of these other places where you have this extraordinary richness of architectural heritage uh, in, in quite a small area so that you can visit, uh, you know, a dozen places, houses, beaches, uh, all in quite a short period. And I just hope that the series, The Gilded Age, wakes the uh, people up to what is actually in their country for them to go and see, uh, because I'm sure they will be very, very rewarded. Uh, for me, the period of the Gilded Age, uh, exemplified in Newport, uh, was really a time when America 
uh, had come through the Civil War, of course, uh, and, and generated these enormous fortunes in the process in railway and shipping and copper and oil and all the rest of it. From this time, uh, they started to develop a way of doing things that was their own and wasn't borrowed. Before the Civil War, in a way, the upper classes in America lived in a sort of, uh, a sort of European style. But now that began to change, and they realized they didn't want to be rich or grand as the Europeans were. They wanted their own version. And I always feel, looking back, of course, with the benefit of hindsight, uh, that it was a preparation for the century that was coming that they would dominate, because the 20th century would be the American century. There's no doubt about that. Uh, and in the 1880s, 90s, they were building up to that. And within a comparatively short time, in 1918, even though they hadn't fought in the war, uh, the, so the, the Great War, as, as long as several of the other countries, nevertheless, theirs was the loudest voice at the peace. And it was because America was starting to feel its strength. Just as there is a moment where young men suddenly begin to understand their strength or the things they're good at, or young women the same, or, or they start to understand the power they have over other people. Similarly, America was understanding its strength in the world and the fact that it was what we now call a world power. And I think that was expressed in many ways in the way the Gilded Age society lived and behaved. Of course, the other aspect of it is the extraordinary women that were part of all that. Uh, I mean, Alva Vanderbilt is an obvious example, but Mamie Fish and Tessie Ulrichs and May Gurlitt and Mrs. Astor, of course, dominating it all. I mean, now in 2022, these women would be running ICI or they would be the ambassador to the UN or all these other things. And even then, Alva Vanderbilt ended up promoting women's suffrage and marching down Fifth Avenue. Uh, but, you know, at that time, women were very limited in what they were allowed to do. And so they turned their ambitions and their personalities towards society and their place in it. Uh, and as a result, they, they built this society, they then dominated. Uh, and I find that as a parallel achievement to the men on Wall Street building up this extraordinary economy that would make America the richest country in the world. I mean, it is uh, a fascinating period in the history uh, of, of America, of your country, uh, but also in the history of the world. Uh, and I hope that I've made people with this show curious about it and anxious to know more. The, the best compliment I can ever receive is when people say, Oh, after reading, uh, seeing your program, I read a book about the Vanderbilts. I read a book about Jay Gould. I read a book uh, about Carnegie. Uh, that I love to hear because I love it when people take it on into a real interest. But that's enough from me now. Uh, I just want to say thank you again for the Antiquarian Award. I shall cherish it. Thank you very much. You're most welcome, Lord Fellows, and we're looking forward to seeing you live and in person on July 26th in Newport this summer. Good. I'll be there. Thank you.